Happy Thursday, everybody. If it's Thursday here on this channel, that means it's time for a new episode of Let's Talk About Butt Stuff. I'm Barrett Laurie, and today's topic is a hot one. We're talking about anal. Mm. Not the fun kind, we're talking about anal fistulas. You're welcome. Before we get into that topic, though, we're going to cover the basics we cover before every episode. If you enjoy the content, click that like button and leave me a comment below. I promise to get back to you unless you're a nasty porn scammer who's trying to talk about a different kind of anal, in which case I will banish you to the bowels of YouTube hell. But for everybody else, I cannot wait to converse with you on this topic and anything else chronic illness related in the comments below. So punch that like button for me. Also, if you're new here and enjoy the content, Click that subscribe button and ding the bell. The bell is going to give you notifications every time I upload new content to the channel, which is about three times per week. So if you're not already giving me a follow on the socials, head over to Instagram and Twitter. Get on over there and find me at Barrett underscore Laurie and give me a follow. I am open to talk to you about anything on your journey with chronic illness. I specifically suffer from Crohn's disease, but I'm happy to support you through your journey with whatever you're dealing with that falls under the chronic illness umbrella. So, if any of that sounds like it might be of interest to you, hop on board the Let's Talk About Butt Stuff train, because it's time to leave the station and talk about the anal fistulas. Hi, everybody. So, I had another video planned for today, and I ended up pushing it to next week because I got a really compelling message from a mother of a young boy in his early teens on Twitter. Uh, she had caught one of my Let's Talk About Butt Stuff videos and watched through the playlist to the first one where I talked about my experience of my diagnosis with Crohn's disease. And something rang true with her in that her son has been misdiagnosed with a hemorrhoid for the last four months while he suffered with an anal fistula. And man, oh man, can I relate to that. So this video is in response to you. Of course, we have talked via message, but I wanted to put something together because you had said you wanted something you could watch with your son and possibly share with other people if you're asked about your experience in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the basics of what my experience has been like and my misdiagnosis was like. I'm going to preface this by saying I am not a doctor, so this should not replace an appointment with your primary care physician and a colorectal surgeon who are best positioned to diagnose you with an anal fistula should you have one. So what this whole series is about, the Let's Talk About Butt Stuff series, is to take away the stigma of talking about stuff like anal fistulas. Like, if that makes you queasy, look inside yourself and ask yourself why. It is not caused by any outside circumstance other than usually a chronic illness, specifically in my case, Crohn's disease. But if you're queasy talking about anal fistula or that word does not roll off your tongue or makes you uncomfortable or makes you feel some kind of way, you need to sit with that for a moment and figure out why. We need to get past this nonsense so that people don't suffer for months and months and months from pain because they're afraid to talk about hemorrhoids, anal fistulas, any kind of crazy business going on back in the crack, okay? Now, I am gonna also say, before I get into the video, I apologize, my energy level is starting to drop. Uh, my Remicade infusion was about a month ago and I can already feel my body starting to slow down and I am going to be not able to keep up with the schedule I've been keeping up with so far. So chronic illness, it means forever. And for me in this disease, the longer I go between Remicade infusions, the deeper my troughs get to be towards the end before the next one. My doctor is battling with my insurance company right now. The video about the Remicade and insurance infusions, that's next week's video. It was supposed to go up today, but um, you'll see it next week. My insurance company doesn't want to pay, and my doctor is having to fight with them to get me the medicine that is the only thing that works for me. So... I apologize, I'm not my usual chipper, perky self, but I'm doing the best I can and I'm gonna keep pushing. And if you'll bear with me, I will do my best to get back in that place where I can entertain you with a little more jazz and pizzazz in coming videos, especially once I have that next infusion. So bear with me. Anal fistulas. How fun. So here's my experience with this nightmare that this mother went through with her son. First of all, I first noticed there was a problem when I had blood in my stool. And when I say blood in my stool, we're not talking about just a little bit on the toilet paper. We're talking about 
lots of blood physically in the stool after I had had a bowel movement. So first thing I would say is if you're having rectal bleeding at all to the point of seeing discoloration in the water of your stool water, call your doctor. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, call your doctor. An anal fistula is an abnormal tunnel connecting the anal canal and the external skin surrounding the anus. The tunnel occurs when an anal gland becomes block or blocked or infected and has drained manually by itself. So in my case, I have since been diagnosed with complex paraanal Crohn's disease. And what that means is when I'm in flare, which I have been in a whopping flare since last October, go me, probably sooner, probably August to September, but my body gets inflamed right around the anus, uh, the inside of the anus. And so what that presents as is these glands become infected and instead of bursting and the pus and infection coming out with my stool, it burrows a tunnel to the surface. So I had one in the beginning that I was aware of because of the bleeding in the toilet, I had some discharge that seemed odd to me and very smelly. And I knew that that didn't seem like a hemorrhoid. I'd had a hemorrhoid in my past and it is more like a little pocket. It, it's a blood vessel essentially. So it feels like a little lump or pocket. And once it bursts, usually the pain, tenderness and discomfort goes away. For this fistula, what I felt was like a tract and then the the opening that I could feel, because again, I'm, I'm not a gymnast, so I couldn't like really get back there and investigate and try as I might take in some photos to look at for myself. Mm. It's a little tough to get back there and get a good shot, trust and believe. So um, basically I had my husband get back there with a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, so my husband got back there and told me, you know, maybe it's a hemorrhoid. I don't know what I'm looking at. I just know that there is a spot that's bleeding a little bit and there's some orange substance coming out of it. So I went to see my doctor. My doctor was not available on short notice, so I saw the nurse practitioner. And the practitioner almost seemed a little uncomfortable with the conversation, which I wish in hindsight I had pressed more and and pressed more that it didn't feel like a hemorrhoid. She basically quickly had me bend over. I had gauze in there to keep it as dry as possible because again, there was lots of discharge from this spot. And so I explained to her I had trouble sitting, I had painful bowel movements, um, there was a really bad bloody discharge, and I had some serious irritation going on. So she got me on the table, had me take out the gauze, you know, got down there, gave it a good look-see, and basically came back with, yep, it's definitely a hemorrhoid. You've had some discharge, so you've got a rash going on. I'm going to prescribe an over-the-counter medication for you to use to take care of the rash. But this should go away. I'm going to prescribe some antibiotics. Oh, I forgot one thing. I also had a fever multiple times. A fever should tell you right away your body's infected. So that should have been a red flag to the nurse practitioner that this is more than a hemorrhoid. So for the mother that, that wrote me this note, we've talked about this in Messenger, but for people that are asking you what you can look for that's specifically different than a hemorrhoid, throw out a few things. One, the smelly discharge, right? A hemorrhoid's just gonna pop and that's just blood. And that usually presents as just blood on the toilet paper itself. If we're talking about blood with discharge or a bloody water in the stool, which means there's a lot of blood happening, that's something else. Pair that with a fever and you know that there's something bigger going on. So she prescribes me an antibiotic and this cream, sends me home. I spend about 10 days taking the antibiotic. It does kick the infection. Fever goes away finally. I'm still having pain to the point of not being able to sit down. I'm still having bleeding and the discharge comes back with a vengeance two or three days after I get off the antibiotic. I mean, hardcore. And y'all, I'm telling you, the smell is ungodly, okay? So you don't want it. But those are all signs that what you've got going on is an anal fistula. So once I realized that I had been misdiagnosed, I called my doctor's office and insisted that I see him. He was great about calling me and being and saying over the phone, I can't meet with you in person. Can we just talk about your symptoms and see if I can get you sent to a specialist? I say, 
sure, cool. I gotta see somebody and I gotta get this thing under control because it's legit driving me cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So he sets me up with a meeting with a colorectal doctor named Dr. Radika Smith. I go and see Dr. Smith. She puts me on a table, leans me forward, gives it a look-see and immediately says, I believe this is an anal fistula. She said, do you mind if I do a quick probe and I'm gonna take a look inside and if I think it's a fistula, we're gonna set up an exam under anesthesia. And while you're under, what we're gonna do is pop a little hydrogen peroxide in that tunnel. And if it bubbles up, then we're gonna know that there's an infection in there. We're gonna do one of two things once we're in there. We're either gonna do a fistulotomy, which is when they take a metal poker kind of through the tunnel, make sure that it's not through any sphere, um, sphincter muscle, so what, what you use to hold in your bowel, and they'll put a metal rod through, pull the tunnel up, cut the skin open to open the tunnel up so that it can heal on its own. Now, if it runs through your sphincter, then what they're going to do instead is a seton, which essentially is a drain. It's a rubber band, kind of, if you will. What I love about Dr. Smith is she used the analogy that it's like having a butt piercing. Um, <laughs> I thought, okay. So anyway, she gets me on the table, leans me forward, puts the probe in, which wasn't super comfortable. I'm going to be really honest. It's, it's not. It's, it's, there are much more comfortable things that I've had in my life than that. But uh, almost immediately upon doing the probe, she said, yes, I am almost positive this is an anal fistula. So let's go ahead and schedule this exam under anesthesia. She asked me a series of questions trying to figure out if I had Crohn's disease. Now, the reason this is important is there isn't really a test for Crohn's. There's not like a positive negative test for Crohn's. They, they have to look at lots of factors and come up with a diagnosis. The reason it's important with anal fistulas is usually fistulotomies are less likely to handle uh, long-term a fistula for someone with Crohn's disease. It's more likely to come back and be a chronic condition. So cetons are more common for people with Crohn's disease because they're likely to get more than one. But at this point, I just had one, I was in terrible pain and everything that she was asking me, I wasn't ticking any of the Crohn's boxes other than an urgency to go when I had to have a bowel movement. So other than that, most of the other signs that they look for, I didn't meet. So the other note I would say for someone out there trying to figure out whether this could be Crohn's for them is be willing to advocate for yourself if you feel like there is something going on that might be overlooked. Now in Dr. Smith's defense, at that point she hadn't had me on a table, I hadn't had a colonoscopy yet, so we were really going off of just an office visit. So. Flash forward, I have my first colonoscopy. She does see some inflammation around the anus, which, which again made her consider Crohn's, but the radiologist that looked over my colonoscopy at the time basically came back and said, I don't think it's Crohn's. So what are you gonna do? So we have the surgery. I wake up, they place the seton. I feel better for, I'm gonna say a week. I go home, and, and that's another important point. Once the seton is placed, there should be no pain. Now, is there gonna be discomfort if you hit the seton wrong, or if you're sitting for long periods of time, or if you're especially on like a metal bench or a stone bench? No, honey, I cannot do that right now. But it, it's meant to take away most of the pain. So another big red flag would be if you have a seton placed and you're still having pain, call up your doctor and be like, something's going on here that we still haven't addressed. So for me, about a week after I had the first surgery, I, I called her and I said, I am having such a pain that it feels like it's happening all over again. And I feel another spot back there. And I bless my husband's heart. I just couldn't like, uh, he looked, he tried to find it. We took a picture. I, at this point I was like, no, we're gonna go see somebody. We go back to see Dr. Smith. And she, she comes in the room and gets me on the table, leans me forward, doesn't do the probe this time, just looks and says, you know, I can't believe it, but I think you have another fistula. And if so, we're talking about Crohn's disease. And so 
fistulotomy is off the table. We had done a partial fistulotomy on the first, first one, and then we got too close to sphincter muscle and she stopped and did a seton. So she said, fistulotomy is off the table. We're not, we're not even talking about it. She said, we're talking about a seton and I want you to see a GI specialist as soon as we're done. Especially if I get in there and drop that hydrogen peroxide in and it bubbles up, that means there's more infection there. It's another tunnel. And the problem was is uh, a fistula can have a tunnel that has separate tracks that break off of that original tunnel. But this fistula, I had one at six o'clock and this new one was at 12 o'clock. So from where she was looking in her probe, which joy, joy, got to do that again. During the probe, she said, I don't think these tunnels are connected. And if that's the case, I think we're thinking Crohn's. So go back, go under anesthesia. She gets in there, drops the hydrogen peroxide in, and what do you know? Crohn's disease. So, uh, well, excuse me, it's a fistula. <laughs> so my second fistula in three months, and there's more inflammation that she could see. And so she said, this is looking more and more like Crohn's disease. I really want him to get in to see a GI stat. So that's my story with my fistulas. Now, she placed a seton in that second one, so I currently have two drains. Uh, the, the pain on them is really minimal until I get to about this point in the month when my Remicade, I, I'm, I'm a month out from when I was last treated. Starting next week, I'll, if it's like last time, I will probably go back on some Tylenol, just basic pain med because the one that is not healed up yet is still a little tender. In my last MRI, my doctor still saw some inflammation in the paraanal section, that part right outside the, right inside the anus. And one of them is, is healed and ready to come out and the other one is still not. So they're trying to get those Remicade infusions closer together because it's one of the most successful treatments for people with Crohn's is Remicade as the, the way to kind of get that inflammation calmed down and stop your body from creating these tunnels, um, I call them tunnels from hell, to the surface that are so, so painful. To kind of put it into words, when I look back at my journal for how I described the pain, I described it as pressure. The moment I sat down, a pressure like I had a hunting knife cutting its way out of the inside of my body. So when they asked me things like, well, what's your pain level before I had my surgery? I would always answer out of what? And they would say 10 and I would say 15 because I felt like I was like pushing a baby out or something every time I sat down. Horrible. Could not drive a car. And when I say I couldn't drive a car, I, I probably drove a car once in that time before that surgery and I had to go to the pharmacy. I had to pick up these antibiotics, go see the doctor. And I cried both ways because I was in physically that much pain that it just, it, 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 I was crying. And that was on a pillow and a donut and all the butt things. So for what it's worth, I wanted people to know that it's very, I think for me, it's very easy to write off something like pain back there as, well, it's just a hemorrhoid. So I wanted to give my personal experience for what happened to me so that if any of those things pop out to you as something that you've experienced, it's probably not a hemorrhoid. And please go and push and push and push with your physician to get you to a colorectal specialist who can get in there and give it a good look-see and see if you might have a fistula. Because honestly, fistula is rarely just heal on their own, or at least that's what my colorectal surgeon told me, that they rarely heal on their own. They almost always need to be treated in some form or fashion. And for people with Crohn's, there are specific treatments that have to be used in order to get them under control. So for the mother out there who wrote me the letter, I am so sorry that your son went through that pain for months. Uh, we, we had an exchange, so I know I shared with you just my regret at not us not connecting sooner so that I could have maybe said push to see a colorectal surgeon. I'm so glad he's being treated for the fistula. Be sure and stay on top of how he feels if a fever pops up after that fistula is fixed and another one presents, get right back into that colorectal surgeon and advocate for his health care and make sure that they check him for Crohn's because Again, you don't have to tick all the boxes. And the reason I say that is this mother and I just discussed his 
situation. And it, it was eerily similar to mine as far as not checking all of the Crohn's boxes. Um, so I am hopeful that this surgery will result in something positive for your son and that it's going to turn out okay for him and it won't be Crohn's. I hope it's a one-off and you guys will get it under control and he'll be able to go on with his life pain-free. For everyone else out there, I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to put some links in the description below to uh, some definitions of what a hemorrhoid is, what a anal you know, fistula is. I'm also going to link to a few videos um, and information online for what a seton is, um, an image of what an, an anal fistula is, so you can kind of visualize that. And I hope that you'll find the information here helpful for you. So when in doubt, push and advocate for your own health care. Get in there with your doctor and let them know there's something wrong because no one knows your body as well as you do. So if you, if you get a diagnosis that you feel like is off, or that isn't addressing the problem, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Because in the end, you will get it figured out and you will get it under control. So for everyone out there, I wish you all the best. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I thank you for joining me for this super fun topic about anal fistulas. <laughs>